Good morning. There goes Maximus. He don't care about the cold, but this morning is our first good frost, like solid hard frost. It was 30 degrees when we woke up, and now it's warming up quite a bit. The sun is out the frost has melted into dew and chickens are out I'm giving them some of these uh, split peas and some tomatoes a little extra treat for them <laughs> as soon as I back away they'll just love it they go crazy with that yeah. Of course, they think I'm going to be bringing them other stuff. So this half is right next to me, and that half is on the food I dropped because they're smarter. But uh, yep, there they go. Now they're all heading that way. This morning, the plan is that I'm going to go ahead and pretty much I'm going to pull out the last of the tomatoes. Uh, a bunch of the stuff here in the garden. It's done. It's not producing anything else for us. We've harvested everything we could harvest um, We've gotten a lot of green beans a lot of peppers a lot of tomatoes some cabbage uh, a bunch of good stuff Mrs. Howell made a hundred and twelve jars of salsa Hopefully that's enough to last me till uh next summer when we start harvesting our garden to make more I love me some salsa um, but yeah that's the plan today so you can see pretty much the tomato plants are done they're dead I cut off a lot of the other stuff and harvested a lot of stuff that was ready to harvest so what we're not going to do next year, so we had in our stuff here, we did Romas, Better Boys, Beef Steaks, and some Red Cherries. Um, ultimately, the Beef Steak for us was just not a good tomato because we don't do a lot with just like slicing you know the bigger tomatoes like those um, and a lot of ours ended up rotting on the vine before they even got ripened I'll show you one right here as an example see that so they started doing a lot of that and that one's actually not as bad as what a lot of the other ones were um, but before it even got ripened it starts this sort of splitting and rotting and not good so not gonna do those next year um, the better boys those are nice we like those they're still you know a little bit smaller those are pretty good for us to use um, for slicing and um, salads sandwiches little things and then the cherries we love those because we just I like to just eat those like candy um, this is how I'll throw them in salads and other stuff I like to cut them in half throw them in like a scramble um with some eggs and cheese and other stuff for for that kind of thing so those are good and then the romas are perfect for the salsa uh the recipe that that mrs howell is now using um and you get a really good consistency for the salsa it's not real watery and all that kind of stuff because the romas don't have a ton of the guts you know where the slimy seedy stuff is they're more meaty 
Um, sounds like a big truck coming. Nope, I was wrong. It's John Deere. Got a tractor on the way. So they're in harvest mode right now. A lot of the fields, they've already cut the corn. Um, a lot of them have done their last cutting for the uh, hay or feed. And, um, so there's a lot of that going on. They're out there harvesting their, their stuff. This is the time of year for that to happen. So uh, we're having more of the tractors and big trucks rolling by big old farm trucks and things um so uh oh max is digging in my melon patch let me show you what that looks like hey max get out hey get out of there so i took my other melon patch and i basically when I pulled everything out, I threw it over here. I harvested a bunch of the melons. Those are the rinds and some of the stuff that uh, we gutted out of them. Uh, there's a few melons like that little guy there. And there's a couple other ones down under the grasses here. I'm just letting those rot. Letting them go down to ground. They'll stay there in winter time. They'll be under the snow. And then hopefully what I'm having next spring will be this circle when I mow I'll just mow around it and let it go and I'm hoping that that'll fill in as a melon patch um, next year and you know they'll self seed and and come back so that's the goal on that one um, over on this bunch here, there's that little kale all by itself there doing its thing, but if you look down this row, there is the pole beans. I already ripped out all of the, uh, there was a couple of uh, corn stalks that took off, but not really producing anything. Um, and this all was covered with... Um, the squash I ripped all that out but I left the trellising and I left all these little fellas here with the pole beans and on the vines I left some of those those are little tiny ones but I left some some full-size ones there um, and there's one right there and I'm letting those just hit the ground and hopefully those will reseed and maybe next year that'll give me a whole wall of green beans. I'm hoping those will come back next year on the same spot. If need be, I'll plant more. No big deal. Those were direct seed and we got a ton of them. Um, the uh, other deal here, this is our our herb slash tea garden um, I'm gonna rip all this out this is all cilantro that has gone to seed um, all those little guys are seed but I don't want them to reseed here in this same location I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna make a separate little patch uh, another big round section somewhere out here and I'm gonna hope hopefully those will reseed and I'll have those in the yard there um, and I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this whole bunch here of chamomile I'm gonna rip all those things just rip them out from the roots and make a whole patch of just chamomile um, and then we've got the mint and lemon thyme they're side by side here kind of hard to even differentiate which ones are which and then there's some other mint no I'm lying this is all lemon thyme this is mint and that's another mint back here a little smaller type of mint and that's a little bit of rhubarb that I was testing to see if it would actually grow it looks like it kind of did not super great but 
a little bit a little bit growing there so um i'm basically going to leave the mint probably leave that rhubarb why not but i'm going to leave the mint and the lemon thyme to kind of just take over this um hopefully they come back in spring next year and keep getting bigger and bigger and i'm going to pull out the chamomile that big row here and the cilantro that big row over there and i'm going to make a couple of patches out in that open space way out that way and that should give me um some of the landscape style that i want to go with um I'm gonna kind of make it, I don't know, like a little, um, I don't know what they even call it, like an English garden. Um, so I'll have the little sort of round, round patches of, of things growing taller and, um, and little walkways in between kind of a thing. Um, uh, I'd like to do a little something more out this way too. We want to put a row of some kind of pine trees evergreen on this side of the driveway coming from up here coming down this way probably to about there uh, just kind of act like a little bit of a screen more so from the road to block the view and the dust and other things because those pine trees are nice and thick but then over here where the fruit trees are we'd like to put maybe some other fruit trees and some other things planted in and around them again kind of make it more of a garden slash park type of a setting with you know little walkways and things uh less mowing required and more productivity and more beauty um that's the idea and we'll see how it goes um the garden itself the regular vegetable garden will do raised beds um hoping to be able to cut some cedar lumber over winter time um and then use that cedar to build the raised beds so we'll see how that works winter is coming we are definitely into fall leaves are changing color and uh harvest is pretty much done for us so today i'm going to clear out the the garden area pull all these plants out of the ground on the uh the rows i mounted them up so i'm going to knock those mounds all down level spread that around nice and flat um and then just let it do its thing for winter so that next spring when I'm ready to build some raised beds, I've got a flat ground to work with. So that's it pretty much. We'll give you an update and show you what all that looks like on the next one probably. Thanks for watching and we will see you guys on our next video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a complete stranger. Go check us out. All right, bye.